Consuelo Kanaga by Group One. Who is Consuelo Kanaga? She was born May 25th, 1894 in Astoria, Oregon, and died February 28th, 1978. In 1911, her family moved to Larkspur, California. She later moved to New York in 1922. The history of her career started in 1915, where Kanaga got a job as a reporter, future writer, and part-time photographer for the San Francisco Chronicle. In 1918, she joined the California Camera Club and discovered Alfred Stieglitz, Stieglitz's work, camera work which by her own word, words changed her life. Stieglitz inspired her to become a photographer. Shortly after moving to New York, Kanaga worked as a news photographer for the New York American until 1924. She was introduced to Alfred Stieglitz. He personally continued to work with her in order to help her transform her vision from a photojournalism perspective to a more artistic photo photographic style. She had many, many personal achievements throughout her career, starting with a trip to Europe in 1928, which awakened her lifelong preoccupation with European modernist painting and the ways in which the work was influenced by the sculpture of Africa. In 1931, she met and began to employ African-American Elard Lucial McDaniels, who worked for her as a handyman and chauffeur. She began to photograph him around her home, and as they talked, she became captivated by African-Americans and their continuing fight against racism. In 1932, she was invited by Weston and Ansel Adams to participate in the famous group F-64 show at the MHD Young Museum and showed four prints. In 1935, Kanaga moved to New York where she worked on an assignment for Index of American Design and aligned herself with the political left, photographing for such publications as New Masses, Labor Defender, and Sunday Worker. Towards the end of her career, she became very active in civil rights, and she took part in and photographed many demonstrations and marches. In 1963, she was arrested in Albany, Georgia during the Walk for Peace. A series of three marriages and one canceled engagement precipitated Kanaga's periodic relocations between New York and San Francisco, where she established a portrait studio. Her last marriage was to painter Wallace Putnam in 1936, after which she lectured at the New York Photo League and continued to maintain a successful portrait business. Kanaga was a very talented photographer. She was highly skilled in the darkroom, and she specialized in various photo styles, such as portraiture, still life, and cityscapes. She had a way of using light that created drastic emotional and visual value to her portraits, which you will see in the following photos. These are some of her most memorable photos. One thing that you can see in common with most of these photos is that she conveys much emotion and raw emotion into each of her photos as if she was a part of them. Her most well-known photo was called, She is a Tree of Life to Them. She, uh, this photo was titled by Edward Steichen and it was included in the Family Man exhibition at the New York Met in 1955. This photo shows the strength and resilience of African-American women in the U.S. Her children clinging to her shows how supportive she is towards her children and that she would do anything for her children. The importance of Kanaga's photographs range from her showcasing the emotion of the individuals 
Her photographs gave a sense of empathy for the individuals as well as what they were feeling. Her photographs were sympathetic, felt real, and showcased many emotions of individuals, especially people of color. A lot of her photographs were portraits of people where some of them had their eyes as the main focus point of the photo. Their eyes told their story, which in a lot of cases, the story of their struggles and racially motive issues they faced. Writers have said that she was and is an important figure in the early 1900s for photography, but she was unseen majority of the time because of different possible reasons. For example, gender norms of her time and her quote, controversial unquote, topic of her art. She even said herself that she wasn't a Bologner. She contributed to projects and exhibitions, but never felt she belonged. For instance, she contributed four prints of her work to an exhibition with other artists like Edward Winston and Ansel Adams, but she never felt she was part of the group or any group. Aside from being unseen, Kanaga took important photographs that sympathized with African Americans and showed their overall emotions and resilience. She made her work transcendent and unique. Her photographs were personable and had empathy within them.